With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. You won. For real. For real. An unbelievable phone. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, hello, hello, one, two, three, the news. Mike check, Mike check, one, two, three, four, Mike check, one, two, three, four. Why does it have a fucking heat index of seven? With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 Eyewitness News at 11. Good evening, I'm Cameron Taylor. Thank you for joining us tonight. We now know who the winner is of the largest Chattanooga Dream Home yet. Out of the 9,500 tickets sold, Paul Belcher from Chattanooga had the ticket chosen in a random drawing. We sat down with him this afternoon to talk about what's next. You won. For real. For real. <laughs> An unbelievable phone call for Paul Belcher from Channel 3's David Carroll. As Belcher and his family laid eyes on the St. Jude Dream Home for the first time, he started to feel overwhelmed. Oh gosh, I'm still in shock. <laughs> still in shock. The nearly 6,000 square foot home has four bedrooms, three and a half bathrooms, and some great extras. That includes a basement, two fireplaces, a large wraparound porch, and a gorgeous back deck built for entertaining. Before Belcher and his wife received the great news, they were taking care of their grandson. I thought somebody was kidding with me. <laughs> but I told her, I said, now how would they know I bought a ticket? I gave the phone to her. <laughs> I said, I <don't. laughs> they found out it wasn't a joke. So the family made a trip to the Eagle Bluff Woods community. Running up the stairs, Belcher's grandson picked out his bedroom almost immediately. This one's mine. That one, is it pretty good size? Yeah. The five-year-old made himself at home. For Belcher, the money that goes toward the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is what matters most. He says he's supported the cause by buying a ticket for the last few years. Well, the house is neat, but for the cause for the kids, I mean, uh, there can't be no better cause. And this year's St. Dream Home sold the most tickets ever. Through those ticket sales and donations, $907,000 will go to St. Jude. Meteorologist Nick Austin standing by. And Nick, are we going to have some great weather ahead this week, huh? Boy, it's going to feel like fall as you step outside tomorrow morning. It's really, really nice. It's going to be a treat here for an early summer day, and we'll take a look at what's happening now. We have clear skies and a nice 69 degrees. That's normally the late night, early morning low on any given day around this time of the year. So we're going to dip, obviously, way below that. And the radar is clear, too. Uh, just a little bit of ground clutter. We have clear skies and light winds, so you get a little bit of that ground clutter around the radar site, but that's nothing to worry about. We're not going to see uh, really much rain at all the next few days outside of maybe just a couple of sprinkles. Better chances for showers and storms later in the week as the mugginess comes back, but enjoy the next uh, few days or so. I'll have more on the seven day forecast and your back to work forecast for tomorrow coming up in just a bit. All right, thank you, Nick. We'll try to enjoy that weather while we can. A 59 year old man died today while kayaking on the Collins River in Middle Tennessee. TWRA officials say while kayaking down the river around 830 this morning, Ernest Wade hit a small overhanging tree 
flipped over and struggled to swim. He was not wearing a life vest. His companion tried to rescue him but was unable to and called 911. Wade's body was found just before 4 o'clock this afternoon. Officials say recent rains, elevated water levels, and swift moving currents make recovery efforts more difficult. The, pharmac the pharmacist connected to a fungal meningitis outbreak in 2012 faces sentencing tomorrow. The former executive of the New England Compounding Center, located in Massachusetts, was charged following the outbreak that killed 64 people and sickened over 750. In 2012, the company sent out 17,000 vials of a steroid to clinics and hospitals in 23 states, which had been contaminated with fungus with people in Indiana, Michigan, and Tennessee, the hardest hit. Now, an investigation found that the company was manufacturing large quantities of steroids without FDA approval rather than preparing individual prescriptions. Now, the man was acquitted of murder allegations but convicted of racketeering, conspiracy, and fraud. Tennessee Governor Bill Haslam will focus on economic development as he heads to Europe tomorrow. Haslam and members of his administration will pitch Tennessee's advantages to European businesses wanting to begin operations in the southeast. There are more than 500 European-owned businesses that operate here in Tennessee, employing approximately 62,000 Tennesseans. In May, Nokian Tires of Finland announced it would invest $360 million to build a new tire manufacturing facility in Dayton, creating at least 400 new jobs. Japanese airbag maker Takata has filed for bankruptcy protection. The company made the announcement Monday morning Tokyo time. Company officials confirmed that most of its assets will be bought by key safety systems in Detroit. Takata is responsible for at least 16 deaths and 180 injuries from their defective airbags that touched off the largest automotive recall in U.S. history. Up next here on Eyewitness News at 11, a girl falls from an amusement ride in New York and is caught by park visitors. The whole incident caught on camera. Welcome back. An Arkansas prison escapee who had been on the run for more than three decades has been recaptured. The Arkansas State Department of Corrections says 60-year-old Stephen Dishman was arrested today at a home in Springdale, Arkansas. The Corrections Department says Dishman was serving a seven-year sentence for theft of property and burglary convictions in Washington County when he escaped in 1985. 
The U.S. Supreme Court heads into its last day of the current term tomorrow with two important questions unanswered. What's to become of President Donald Trump's travel ban? And will 80-year-old Justice Anthony Kennedy retire? Now, the Justice Department has urged the justices to lift bans imposed by lower courts blocking enforcement of the president's executive order on travel. It called for a 90-day ban on issuing visas to citizens from specified Middle Eastern countries, and speculation about a possible retirement by Justice Kennedy has also been making its rounds. A Kennedy retirement would give Trump the ability to reshape the court, and tomorrow the court could also announce whether it will take or reject several appeals that have been piling up for months, including whether businesses can refuse to provide their services for same-sex marriage ceremonies. New York billionaire Michael Bloomberg's foundation is putting up more than $17 million for a new contest that encourages the nation's mayors to address critical issues themselves. The new effort is to be announced tomorrow at the U.S. Conference of Mayors in Miami. Bloomberg Philanthropies will award at least $100,000 to 35 cities and millions more to a handful of top winners that develop innovative policies to help their residents. Chattanooga Mayor Andy Burke is one of the mayors expected to be there. Tense moments at Six Flags Amusement Park in upstate New York where a teenage girl fell from a sky ride and it was all caught on camera. Take a look here. Video shows the 14-year-old girl dangling from a stopped gondola more than 20 feet above the ground. A bystander heard people screaming and shot this video. Then a crowd gathered below the girl and she fell into their arms. Police say she's in stable condition tonight at a hospital in Albany. One of the men who caught her is also in a hospital with a back injury. The man who shot this video praised those who came to the girl's rescue, but he was critical of park employees' slow response. It seems though somewhere along the ride they should have something stationed, whether it's ladders or some means to perform a rescue, because it's too long to wait for one of the, you know, uh, cherry pickers that you can drive around. Glad she's okay. It's unclear how the girl ended up dangling from the gondola. Authorities say state investigators inspected the ride and found everything in working order. But Six Flags says it's keeping the ride closed while an internal review is conducted. Straight ahead here on Eyewitness News at 11, meteorologist Nick Austin will have your Monday morning forecast. With coverage you can count on, this is Channel 3 I. Which is huge to help us care for those children.
Hey, temperatures are very pleasant now across the Tennessee Valley. Upper 60s from Nashville right here into Chattanooga and Atlanta too. A little warmer as you head further south towards the Gulf Coast. It's 82 right now in New Orleans and still very muggy down there. But we have the drier and more comfortable air that has now settled uh, across the Tennessee Valley. It's going to feel really nice. It does out there now, but it's going to feel even better as you step outside tomorrow morning. It's 69 degrees in the city right now. That's normally the late night, early morning low for this time of the year. So we're going to get several degrees below that. 63 in Dalton, 56 out in Murphy, 61 in Altamont, and Athens at the Mimin County Airport. It's 59 degrees. Winds are calm and it's really nice out there. If you're an early riser for tomorrow, 60 degrees around 5 a.m. as you're grabbing your coffee. And about 8 o'clock, uh, once we get some sunshine in, we'll be at about 62. So it's going to be a nice, cool, and comfortable start to the day. Not real muggy and just really nice. And the skies have been clearing nicely throughout the evening. With this high pressure and the drier air just sinking down uh, through the atmosphere, down to the ground, and, and overall sinking in, uh, moving from the Ohio River Valley down here into our neck of the woods. So it's pushing this uh, cold front, which is becoming stationary across the southeast. And uh, scattered showers and storms now are along the southeast coast and over in the parts of the Gulf Coast as well. But we're going to stay high and dry with very little chance for any significant rain over the next few days. Outside are just a few sprinkles. So we'll see some high clouds drifting across the area for tomorrow afternoon. Some of those clouds stick around tomorrow night. Late tomorrow night and into Tuesday, we could see just a few sprinkles, but I don't think we'll get much rain out of that uh, weak disturbance moving through. And then Wednesday, we're back to more sunshine and southerly winds kicking in by Wednesday and Thursday. So it'll get warmer later in the week and we'll see the field of mugginess coming back as well with more of a summer like pattern uh, beginning to set up later in the week, but not for the first few days of the week. So uh, just get out and enjoy it. It's going to be really nice. Here's a closer look at the Viper cast with some of those high clouds tomorrow afternoon. A few clouds here and there tomorrow night and partly cloudy skies with maybe a few sprinkles on Tuesday and that's about it. Wednesday is going to be a nice day as well, so not a whole lot of weather going on. We kind of need a break from the rain anyway. Uh, we're a little bit behind for the month, but for the year, 5.8 inches ahead of schedule. There wasn't a drop of rain out at the airport today. We had a few spots that had some sprinkles or very, very light rain just for a couple of minutes. Nothing measurable earlier this morning. 81 and 65, the high and low temperatures. We should be near 90 this time of the year, so we're going to stay well below that for the next few days, so enjoy it. 79 Fort Payne, the high today. 79 also for Chatsworth. Calhoun, Georgia hit 75 with Lafayette at 78. It was 75 up on Signal Mountain today, 78 for Ottawa and Cleveland. Uh, Johnny and Ringgold had 75, 82 up in Sidey Daisy. Only 71 in Turtletown today. Uh, a lot more cloud cover across the Blue Ridge. 80 for uh, Delano today, 79 was the high in Athens, but Spring City was one of the hot spots at 84 degrees. 59 late tonight. That's the low here in the city. It's going to be nice. Uh, mostly clear skies. A little patchy fog in a few spots. Won't be out of the question with calm winds the rest of the night. 82 tomorrow. Sunshine with some clouds, northwesterly breezes, and maybe a couple of sprinkles tomorrow night, especially after midnight. Other than that, just some clouds tomorrow night and 62 for the low late tomorrow night. 82 on Tuesday up to the mid 80s on Wednesday. And then uh, Thursday, we could see a couple of showers with highs creeping back into the upper 80s. The mugginess will be creeping back later in the week as well. So let's enjoy these next few days when it's not so humid. And later in the week, especially by Friday and maybe next weekend too, we'll see more of these scattered storms popping up. But until then, uh, those rain, the rain showers will be few and far between the next few days. So. Yeah. And I think a lot of people yeah. are looking forward to this cooler weather, some oh, yeah. fall-like temperatures almost. It's going to be nice. I mean, open up the windows tonight, let in some of that fresh, uh, cooler air. Yeah. Yeah, definitely beats <laughs> rainy or hot days. We'll That's take right. it. Okay. Thanks, Nick. You bet. Well, as you head off to work tomorrow morning, we have some traffic alerts for you. And Ray County contractors are working at the intersection of State Route 378 in Dayton. They are realigning the intersection of US 27 with State Route 378. Work begins tomorrow morning at 830. The crossing of Little Richland Creek is closed to traffic. Here in Hamilton County, work on the bridge over Hicks and Pike continues. The changeover will take several days depending on the weather. The lane closure is in place until late November. The project is expected to be completed by May of next year. For a list of detours and a look at all of your traffic concerns, download the WRCB app. It's free for Androids and iPhones. Well, the ice cream social fundraiser at the Chattanooga Market sells out every year, and this year was no exception. 1,200 tickets were sold with the money benefiting the Chambliss Center for Children. 
people bought a ticket and sampled ice cream donated from five vendors before voting on a favorite. All the money goes to the nonprofit that provides foster care and child care assistance. People at the center say fundraising is very important. This will generate more than $6,000 for us, which is huge to help us care for those children. So we are, are putting that back into our programs where we're providing food and diapers and all those sorts of things, but basically um, helping us support what we do for at-risk children. All right, here's some of the winners. Best pure flavor category went to milk and honey. The winner in the flavor with inclusions category went to the ice cream show. Some great places right there. Coming up next in sports, Tennessee football improves its recruiting class, adding two top recruits today for 2018. Jill Jonick has the latest. Plus, the lookouts continue to stay hot this summer. We have the highlights from their back-to-back -back wins today. Stay with us. Sports is next. Whatever head coach Butch Jones is doing. Whatever head coach Butch Jones is doing, it's working. Just one week after Tennessee hosted its annual Big Orange Carpet event, three top recruits announced this weekend that they'll be playing for the Volunteers. Saturday, four-star running back Lynn J. Dixon committed. Then another two targets followed suit today. The first was three-star running back Anthony Grant from Buford, Georgia. Grant is ranked as the 19th best running back in the 24-7 sports composite for the 2018 class. The rising senior chose the Vols over North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech, along with offers from at least 30 other teams. Then, shortly after his commitment, three-star D-lineman Jamarcus Chapman took to Twitter today to announce that he's also committed to the Vols. Chapman, a Ro Rome, Georgia native, had just decommitted from LSU last week and went to the Vols Orange Carpet Day last weekend. Chapman told Go Vols 24-7 his visit, quote, blew him away. Chapman gave the Vols their 15th known commitment for the class of 2018. And while we're on the subject, big congrats to Ridgeland's Markeith Montgomery on his commitment to Kennesaw State this weekend. Montgomery was named Region Defensive Player of the Year and Region Co-Player of the Year just this past season. The rising senior also had offers from Florida Atlantic, Mercer, Chattanooga, Citadel, Wofford, and Central Michigan. Big congrats to the Ridgeland st standout. Over on the racetrack, Kevin Harvick returned to victory lane today for the first time this season. The NASCAR Cup Series was at Sonoma Raceway for the Toyota Save Mart 350. Martin Truex Jr. and Jimmy Johnson won the first two stages. 
Then Kyle Busch battled back from tire problems to grab the lead here in the final stage. But with 47 laps to go, Kevin Harvick pounces on the M&M's Toyota coming out of the turn to take the top spot. Teams were gambling on fuel a bit late in the race and Harvick was able to conserve enough to pull away for a nine second lead over Klimp Boyer for the win. Brad Klazowski came in third. As I mentioned, this was the first win for Harvick this season, snapping a 20 race winless streak. It's also the first win at Sonoma for Harvick, who just so happens to be a Bakersfield, California native. The Cup Series will be back in action next Saturday night under the lights at Daytona International Speedway. The Lookouts already clinched a playoff spot by winning the first half of the season, but now they refuse to take the foot off the gas. Chattanooga has won 13 of its last 14 games, and that includes back-to-back -back wins on this beautiful Sunday. The Lookies hosted the Pensacola Blue Wahoos today for a makeup double header. Lookouts won the first game six to nothing and did it all over again in game two. Nick Gordon started things off in the first with a base hit to left and then TJ White poked one into center field with two outs, bringing home Gordon and easy for the score. Chattanooga up one nothing. Lookouts then keep it going in the second. This time though, it's Travis Harrison that leads off with a double off the left center wall. Harrison would eventually make his way to three and that's when Dan Rolfling gets lucky here and reaches first on a throwing error. Harrison comes in for the score and the Lookies take it from there. Chattanooga wins both games today by a score of six to nothing. Next up, they'll head to Mississippi to take on the M Braves later this week. Sticking with the minor leagues, Tim Tebow received a promotion today. The former NFL quarterback will now be moving up to play with the Mets high class A team in St. Lucie, Florida. Tebow started the season with the Columbia Fireflies where he's been posting average numbers. The former Heisman Trophy winner is batting just 222, better than only 10 other players in the league. Now Tim Tebow grew up in Florida, played for Florida, so there's also a good chance St. Lucie is looking to benefit from his star power as well. The Atlanta Braves had a chance to sweep the Milwaukee Brewers today, but Brewers got off to a great start in this one with two outs and a runner on. Travis Shaw sends the Julio Tehran fastball deep to right field, his 15th homer of the season and the first home run to hit off the roof of the Braves' chop house. Brewers up 2-0. Then in the second, Milwaukee keeps it going as Keon Broxton hits another one out of SunTrust Park. In case you couldn't tell, Tehran struggled from start to finish today, surrendering seven earned runs on seven hits over a season-low three-plus innings. The Braves fall 7-0 to Milwaukee, ending the four-game winning streak. But they have won their last geez, nine of 12. Up next, the Braves will head out to the West Coast to take on the Padres first for a three-game set and then the Athletics for another three-game set this week. Certainly got a lot of momentum going. Hopefully they yeah. can keep it up. Yeah, yeah, and lookouts, great back-to-back -back wins today. They're hot, so hopefully. And CFC, can't them. forget about that. Yeah, no, it was a win <laughs> win all around this weekend. Well, nine, nine, nine out of the last 12, I mean, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, Braves have been <laughs> hot. They dropped this last one, but still. Not too shabby, though. Not too shabby. Yeah. Okay, give us an update on what's happening tomorrow. It was an awesome day for baseball, I'll tell you. <laughs> 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, you won't believe it's actually early summer. 62 degrees in the city. Mid 70s by noon, low 80s for highs the next couple of days with maybe just a few sprinkles. Uh, better chances for showers and storms later in the week as it gets muggy again. Okay, all right, thanks, Nick. Well, we all like using emojis on our iPhones or Androids, and get this, you're going to have 137 new ways to uh, express yourself. Those mm -hmm. include broccoli, zombies, a T Rex, and dumplings and pretty cool stuff right there. So get ready for those Ooh, coming unicorn. pretty soon. Coming your way. <laughs> coming your way. Have a good night.
I'd like to do D1, D2, D, and then the Ridgeland, which is kind of D3. And then I want to skip NASCAR and do the lookouts. So I want to do those first three commits, D1, D2, Ridgeland, which is D3, and then skip NASCAR and do lookouts. So is it possible to float that? Does that work like that? No. Nope. Have a good one, Nick. Whatever head coach Butch Jones is doing, it's working. Just one week after Tennessee hosted its annual Big Orange Carpet event, three top recruits announced this weekend that they'll be playing for the Volunteers. Saturday, four-star running back Lynn J. Dixon committed to UT. Then another two targets followed suit yesterday. The first was three-star running back Anthony Grant from Buford, Georgia. Grant is ranked as the 19th best running back in the 24-7 sports composite for the class of 2018. The rising senior chose the Vols over North Carolina, Virginia Tech, and Georgia Tech, along with offers from at least 30 other teams. Now, shortly after his commitment, three-star D lineman Jamarcus Chapman took to Twitter to announce that he's also committed to the Vols. Chapman, a Rome, Georgia native, had just decommitted from LSU last week and went to the Vols Orange Carpet Day. Chapman told Go Vols 24-7 his visit, quote, blew him away. Chapman gave the Vols their 15th known commitment for the class of 2018. And while we're on the subject, a big congrats to Ridgeland's Mark Keith Montgomery on his commitment this weekend to Kennesaw State. Montgomery was named Region Defensive Player of the Year and Region Co-Player of the Year this past season for the Panthers. The rising senior also had offers from Florida Atlantic, Mercer, Chattanooga, the Citadel, Wofford, and Central Michigan. Big congrats to him. The Lookouts already clinched a playoff spot by winning the first half of this season, but now they refuse to take the foot off the gas. Chattanooga has won 13 of its last 14 games, and that includes back-to-back -back wins yesterday. The Lookies hosted the Pensacola Blue Wahoos for a makeup double header. Lookouts won the first game 6 to nothing, and then did it all over again in game two. Nick Gordon started things off here in the first with a base hit to left. And then T.J. White poked one into center field with two outs, bringing home Gordon easy for the score. Chattanooga takes a 1-0 lead, but then Lookies keep it going in the second. This time it's Travis Harrison who leads things off with a double off the left center wall. Harrison would eventually make his way on over to three, and that's when Dan Rofflin gets lucky and reaches first on a throwing error. Harrison comes home, and the Lookies take it from there. Chattanooga wins both games yesterday by a score of six to nothing. Next up, they'll head to Mississippi to take on the M Braves later this week. All right, that's it for sports. I'm Jill Jelnick. I hope you have a magnificent Monday.